Welcome to my lectern line, and now our next integral, the integral of 1 over the cosine of x dx. Now, it looks very simple, but it may not be that easy to do unless you can think of the trick associated with this. Matter of fact, there are several tricks, so we're going to show you the first one now. So the way to integrate this is to first rewrite this as follows. It's the integral of the secant of x dx, and then we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the secant of x plus the tangent of x. Secant of x plus the tangent of x. Of course, this is still equal to 1, but when we do that, we have a means of actually integrating that. And we'll see in just a moment how that works. So again, if you can think of this trick, that's great. It may take a long time to figure it out. I didn't figure it out on my own. I had to go look at some integral tables and go, oh, that's how they did it. Once you see it, then it becomes easier. So this now becomes equal to the integral of, when we multiply this out, we get the secant square of x plus the secant, oop, that's not a very good c, that's the secant of x times the tangent of x divided by the secant of x plus the tangent of x, and that would be then a dx. Now you say, whoa, it's like jumping from the frying pan into the fire. How do you integrate this? But now what we can do is we can do the following. Let u equal the secant of x plus the tangent of x. So what is du equal to in this case? Well, let's figure it out. So we're going to do this one piece at a time. So the d dx, the derivative with respect to x of the secant of x is equal to the d dx of 1 over the cosine of x. And of course we can use the quotient rule on that, which is equal to the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, which of course would be 0, minus the numerator, which is a 1, times the derivative of the denominator, which is a minus sine of x, because the derivative of the cosine is a minus sine, and divide the whole thing by, let's see here, divide the whole thing by the denominator squared, which is the cosine square of x, which is equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine square of x, which is equal to the secant square of x times the Let's see, now the secant of x, because the sine over the, the 1 over the cosine is the secant of x, and the sine over the cosine is the tangent of x. So the derivative of the secant of x is the secant of x times the tangent of x, which we have in the numerator. Hmm, we're getting close there. How about the d dx, the tangent of x, which is equal to the d dx, of the sine over the cosine, which is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is the cosine of x, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is the minus sine of x, all divided by the denominator squared, cosine squared of x, and notice in the numerator, I now end up with a cosine square plus a sine square, which is 1. So which is equal to 1 over the cosine square of x, which is equal to, hmm, how about the secant square of x, which is this part of the numerator. Which means that if u is equal to the denominator, then du is equal to the sum of these two, which is equal to the secant square of x plus the secant of x times the tangent of x, and of course the whole thing times dx. That means that we have the du in the numerator and the u in the denominator. Wow, what a nice help here. So this is equal to the integral of du over u, which of course is equal to the natural log of u, and like this, plus a constant of integration, and since u was defined as the secant of x times the tangent of x, this is equal to the natural log of the secant of x plus the tangent of x plus a constant of integration, the secant here, and that then would be the integral of 1 over the cosine of x. And that is using method 1. Again, 
If you can think of that trick, it might take a long time to figure it out, but that's one way in which we can get the integral of 1 over the cosine of x. That's how it's done.